What's going on YouTube? This is your boy King Gabe here and uh, here we are once again with another history into my old stories. This time we're going into the history of Power Rangers Kroger Force version 3 this time. Go <laughs> go You know uh oh it's how Link Horus uh little things was thought when he did the history of Power Rangers until those until those darn copyright bots came out and yeah you had to go and make re edits and all that because you're using too much of the music Yeah, had to trim a few of my videos because of that as well, so I hate when that happens. Anywho, uh, so, yes, version 3 of Kroger Force, um, so one thing I, uh, one thing I definitely need to, uh, definitely mention that I realized looking back at my previous video, version 2 and 1 and 2 of Kroger Force, uh, I mentioned that, um, I mentioned, I think it was, um, oh yeah, about Super, about when I, uh, talk about how Goofy, the concept behind this was kind of compared to Superman 4 Quest for Peace fighting Metro Man. Really, it's Nuclear Man. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wow, I'm kind of surprised that I didn't, that I didn't see, um, you know, realizing that I'm kind of surprised that, you know, I uh, didn't hear nobody say like, oh, wait, why was he fighting Metro Man? Because Metro Man, of course, is from the movie Mega Mind. <laughs> Unless there's a Metro Man uh, somewhere else I don't know about, but yeah, Superman was definitely fighting Nuclear Man. So just thought I'd get that cleared up there, and uh, without further ado, I suppose we can go on and get right into this history, version three. <laughs> also, if you like what you're about to hear, just make sh make sure you definitely like, subscribe to the channel. Special thanks. Buy some comic books and support us on Patreon, even if it's just a dollar a month. So, on with the show. <laughs> so yes, ver um, so this actually starts off a little differently from the previous two versions, obviously. Um, first off, like I mentioned before, in all these versions of Kroger Force, because we uh, we're on the third one, so there's two left, four and five. Um, I'm, of course, the Red Ranger Tyson. Um, this time we have, uh, we still have Alex and Donald. Uh, then we have Kiki, of course, and Cece. This time Cece is actually, uh, is actually uh, Christina. Uh, so, unlike version 2, uh, this version of Tyson and Cece, because of it being me and Christina, is they're actually engaged at the beginning of the series because um, at the time of making both of these versions we actually were engaged uh, actually uh, Christine and I married in 2011 uh, December 2011 to be exact so yeah um, both both these versions occurred before before we tied the knot so it's pretty accurate uh, so the whole th thing starts off, you uh, got Tyson skateboarding in the parking lot. Uh, a lot different from, you know, when he was doing it in the store. And he comes in and acts, but, uh, of course, hijinks ensue. He accidentally bumps into Kiki, uh, knocking her into one of the shopping carts. And, of course, some jokes are made at first, which kind of gets Tiki, I mean, Kiki, Kiki a little, I'm all, <laughs> Well, enough said there. <laughs> about about the joke part, anyway. Um, so anyway, um, Donald helps to get Kiki out of there, and Alex, and Alex shows up to try to flirt with her. Um, duly note that unlike version two and also the upcoming version four in our next, uh, which will be in another video, Donald in version three um, is actually kind of kind of more serious tone. Whereas in versions two and well as four coming up, he's kind of more uh, comedic relief, uh, more so comedic relief in version two, and in version four it's kind of that mixed with him being sort of a brainiac, um, 
with a with a brainiac and not gonna say um yeah he's smart but uh you know how you sometimes have people that are real that are, that are like super geniuses but sometimes they're a little lightheaded there sort of like Chelsea from Nassau Raven not no I'm not not saying to insult anybody nothing like that but I'm just pointing it I'm just pointing out how some are like that you know just pointing it out <laughs> say no no not insulting <laughs> so uh so yeah, uh, so we got a more serious Donald with version three. Uh, then of course, uh, as Tyson and CC make their way over to the deli to have some lunch, uh, Tyson's uncle Michael and uh, the produce manager and his assistant produce manager Alan Faulkner arrive to talk with the head store manager. We're gonna call her Susie too. I know we had a Susie in version two that was the Pink Rangers, uh, but I kind of forgot the name I gave the head manager in this version. Uh, so we're just going to call her Susie. <laughs> and then of course there's the co-manager trio uh, that's upstairs playing solitaire during this time <laughs> and arguing over whose turn is it. Um, there's Jefferson, Smith, and we're just... And yeah, like I said, it's been a while since I did this. Uh, we're just going to call the third one Connors. Uh, and no, not Kurt Connors from Spider-Man. <laughs> so, Jefferson Smith and Connors, yeah, they're in there and comedically, uh, trying to play solitaire. Um, uh, Michael and, Michael and Alan are, tr are trying to talk with Susie about Tyson being the new assistant manager of produce because Alan is moving to another position in the store. Uh, the chief of engineering over the stores, uh, over the tech, over the the different tech that the store is using and all that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, or like the like a, I guess you could say sort of like um, like a mechanic in a way there. Uh, so so uh, what Tony Stark called himself in Iron Man Three, your friend the mechanic. <laughs> so. But, of course, Susie doesn't think that Tyson has what it takes, and she informs them that she's going to find someone, so they don't need to worry about that. So, then, of course, a little bit later, the store, is in a, the store ends up being attacked by Sidara and flooded. Uh, he doesn't blow up the store this time. He actually just floods it massively, which... Uh, as soon as it starts to happen, immediately all the customers and employees and managers, every, pretty much everybody that's in the store, is instantly teleported to what's known as the Kroger Sky Base. So at least that's kind of an acknowledgement, uh, unlike version 2 where the whole store just blew up and we don't know what happened to everybody inside and it's never brought up or anything. <laughs> so... They're all teleported to the Kroger Sky Base. They meet up with the Kroger president, who uh, tells them what's going on, and everything, and that five of the and that he needs five of the employees to become Power Rangers, which of course he hands out what's called the Kroger Morphers that are infused with these um, Elementian gems. Uh, it turns out that long ago. Um, there were an e there was an evil group of aliens, which Sidara is from, that came to Earth trying to take over the Earth's economy system, and then of course, uh, of course, uh, f from this trace that uh, one of the one of the uh, trading centers back then, which years later would be now known as Kroger, um, had five of had citizens from some of the citizens from there rose up using the power of these Elementian fragments, uh, which is definitely something that will be used in one of my stories, of course. Ele element, the planet Elementus, uh, known for harnessing the power of the elements, uh, used those powers with the aid of some magic in order to defeat the evil aliens there. But the aliens were only defeated and retreated and vowed to come back for revenge. So... Now they're back! Sidara is the first of them. So, five employees now have to take on this uh, mantle of defending of defending Kroger as well as the rest of the Earth there. As 
for the economy system as well. <laughs> Thus becoming the Power Rangers Kroger Force. <laughs> So they come to take, um, Tyson ends up, of course, taking the gem that gives him lightning powers to become Kroger Force Red, uh, and super speed. Alex gets, uh, the powers of water and super strength, becoming the Kroger Force Blue Ranger. Donald gets chosen to harness the, as the Kroger Force Green Ranger with the powers of psychic. Yeah, not exactly an element, but I guess I guess we kind of can accept it a little bit better than the beasts. <laughs> and it's beating them beasts are hot. <laughs> I am a thief from Captain Planet. Hot <laughs> beasts. <laughs> yeah. So psychic powers. Uh, guess that could work. Yeah. Um. Kroger Force Yellow goes to Kiki, of course, uh, with the powers of fire and endurance. Um, and then, lastly, Kroger Force Pink, with the powers of wind and invisibility, ends up going to Cece. Cece's, of course, uh, not too sure about this, since um, she hasn't really, she's not really working at Kroger's at this point, and this sort of, and just sort of kind of ended up in this. But, the gyms have chosen who they've chosen, and they pretty much got to go down and deal with this threat. Leads them, this leads them to teleporting to the amusement park where they morph and fight and go up into battle against Sidara and his rock soldier and his foot soldiers, of course, the rock soldiers, or as I would quote it, rock soldiers. <laughs> so, so the battle begins. They all th uh, fight, and they also are able to unlock their weapons of course uh you got the uh the thunder thunder sword weapon ocean drill pretty much uh now of course this th this weapon w will change in a another version but we'll get to that uh, green ranger has of course the giga gun shield sort of like what he had in version two uh the uh yellow ranger this time has a, I want to, oh yeah, um, I think she has a fire axe, of course, uh, pretty, pretty drastic, um, uh, pretty, uh, drastic weapon, much like Stormbreaker, but with fire, and then, of course, Cece has the wind cannon, and they use these weapons and their powers, uh, the, they get, they defeat the rock soldiers, of course, and then, of course, they are about to, uh, they are about to manage to defeat Sidara, but apparently uh, Cece's aim of her weapon ends up going off the wrong direction, uh, thus accidentally getting Kiki blasted. And yeah, this leads Kiki to getting pretty mad with Cece. Uh, Tyson ends up having to break two of them up. And yeah, there's a bit of drama with that there, uh, leading to Tyson having to try to of course, uh, talk with CC, you know, the, um, uh, CC, and, um, then, of course, Kiki is kind of reminded of when she first started out at Kroger, and, of course, the villain escapes, uh, throughout all this, so they have, so the Rangers end up retreating as well. Um, Kiki, it, Kiki is then reminded of back when she first started, um, how things were not so good for her at first, and kind of realizes, um, maybe, um, yes, it, it was a big mistake getting blasted, very understandable, but, yeah, probably should not be so hard on Cece, cause especially considering in her, in Cece's case, she wasn't, she was pretty much just trying to do what she was destined to do, even though she really was not feeling it there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, um, so when they all get back, so they all end up getting back together, you know, reconciling everything, and of course they're able to finally defeat Sidara, but then Kodran shows up, and this is when we get introduced to the Zords for this version, which will also be the, the ver will also be the Zords for the other two versions of this series, the Kroger Truck Zords. Apparently, Alan has constructed them, or out, during this time, Alan uh, constructed them pretty, pretty quick to construct 
Krober trucks that would be the size of Zords that we see in Power Rangers. But you know that you know that morphing grid magic. <laughs> so, so they get into these Kroger trucks. Uh, they come in different colors, of course, matching the Rangers: red, blue, green, yellow, and pink. And and combining them together, they're able to defeat Kodran. And thus, the Power Rangers Kroger Force are born. Also, um, Tyson becoming the assistant produce manager because of his leadership skills with the Ranger team being being seen by Susie, of course. Uh, then, of course, uh, Cece, being that she's a part of the Cro of the Ranger team, decides to become decides to join the Kroger staff as well as the say in the floral department. <clears throat> so there's that. <laughs> And a, and the ser and then we go on into the next few episodes. Uh, the episode, the very following episode continues where they get what's called I think this is where they get their I want to say get their auto blasters I think, and also a communication system with their morphers so that they can communicate with each other. It's also it's also where the introduction of what's called backup morphers are introduced, where they can also where temporarily, if if it's needed, they can have other employees uh, join in with them as backup rangers. This was actually now, it's now starting off. This isn't quite this this is somewhat of a good idea starting out, but later on it um. Uh, might get a little Mary Sue-ish, and those of you who don't know what Mary Sue is, which I'm pretty, which I highly doubt anyone would, but just in case there is, because, you know, um, Mary Sue is usually a term uh, that's usually used for describing a character that has no weaknesses um, in a lot of in certain stories. Um, a lot of times, some writers, myself included, <laughs> have been guilty of doing this type of thing. You know, writing a character like that, and this, and I've done that even before writing Kroger Force or any or any of my Ranger series and other stories as a kid, like back in Digimon, uh, with me and a friend of mine, um, used to pretend that. Our Digimon uh, used to pretend, which this will be, which you'll hear more about this in another video. Uh, pretend that Garfield and Pikachu were our Digimon. Don't ask. <laughs> and we came up with the concept. Not only did they get Digi eggs because it was season two, we were we were imagining ourselves in, but they also would get um, mostly Garfield uh, would get what's called these uh, the Digi egg. Then a crest to do ultimate armor, and then mega armor digi eggs. <laughs> yeah, and all kinds of other power ups as well. Yeah, it was. So that kind of was a Mary Sue, uh, mega armor digi eggs with two crests. Uh, going back with the Rangers, yeah, this you'll see and eventually say so you'll you'll hear eventually why this became kind of a Mary Sue. Um, so, going back to where, going back to this episode, um, they decide to test out one of the backup morphers, uh, a little bit later. We then get word that Alex is starting to sh shrink his responsibilities at Kroger and not showing up when he needs to, uh, ever since seeing this girl that's come up, uh, named Selena. And yeah, I know that's actually the name of the villain in Bubbleina, but this was before Christina started writing the series, so <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so or maybe Serena was her name. Uh, one uh, talking about for Kroger Force. Anyway, uh, we'll just say Serena. So Serena uh, actually uh, say gets Alex to go on a date with her, and ever since this date, yeah, this is where things start falling. This is where uh, Alex starts becoming a bit irresponsible on the clock and stuff, showing up late and be kind of showing up really late for work, sometime in the middle of the shift, be uh, like say going on a break or something, uh, being asleep up there like Squidward from SpongeBob, and well, not waking up in time to, which means taking a longer break than he should. 
because of him being asleep. Yeah, so then, but then the Rangers eventually find out what's going on, and of course it leads to the confrontation with Serena uh, as she's cap and she ends up capturing Alex. Thus, uh, thus this calls for one the meet of one of the backup morphers. The Rangers go into battle with her, but she has Cubius to grow her pet monster to grow giant size, and in the but they have to, in order for them to get to Alex as well as defeat this big monster, they're gonna need someone to step in as the Blue Ranger temporarily, which is where a guy named Tony shows up, one of the uh, dairy clerks, and sort of a cool cat. Yeah, he's sort of like uh, the the guy Tony's actually in his fifties, of course, but you know, I'm a cool skate cat, <laughs> and morphs into the Blue Ranger to in order uh, to pilot the Blue Cobra Truck Zord, and they can form the Megazord and defeat Cubius. After that, they're able to get Alex free, who morphs into his original, into the original Blue Cobra Force Ranger, and is able to defeat Serena, pretty, pretty much breaking himself free of her little spell. The whole thing with Alex being irresponsible in an episode because of Serena is actually based off of the guy that I based Alex off of in this version, uh, kind of being somewhat irresponsible in real life there. Yeah, uh, not calling his name, so we're just, uh, but, uh, let's just say, let's just say at, there were times when I, well, when, when I would be at work before him and he had to be there later and turns out, um, he was, he actually, Overslip and would be late for work quite a quite a bit. Not just not just like oh that one little accident, but yeah, quite a bit. <laughs> and as well as also kind of slacking when he was on the clock as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, of course, a lot of yeah, there was kind of that going on at the time of writing this. Um, so. Then after so after dealing with that, then go into say, an episode that sort of focuses with the Green Ranger. I think there's one that sort of focuses with Tyson. I'm not completely sure. Um, I want to say, but uh, let's see. Oh yes, actually there is. Oh, it's coming up. So we get a Green Ranger focused episode with Donald. Where, of course, uh, it deals with a monster called, when an alien called Flydon shows up, who is known as the master of insects and fear, much like in version 2. Fly Apparently, uh, this also deals with fears that the rangers have personally that Flydon uses to target them, being, you know, fear and insects, uh, insects and fear in general. And let's just say, uh, with Donald's case, he's actually afraid of bugs themselves. Yeah, just any kind of bug, just any kind of bug in general, sort of like Misty from Pokemon. Alex's case, he's afraid of the um, actual, the truck, you know, the, the garbage trucks uh, that come, not, um, not the regular garbage trucks that come to the neighborhood, but the ones that are used to get those big dump bins, you know, like out back that uh, a lot of the grocery stores, a lot of retailers and stuff have, like the restaurants and grocery stores, and they have those blades to stick into the garbage thing and lift it up, dump it like so. So, yeah, he has a fear of those kind of trucks because he fears that the blades might, well, uh, might end up attacking him or something. And it kind of freaks him out one, one day when he's taking the trash out for, uh, for the dairy department and he panics running away from one of the trucks as they're approaching. Tyson, of course, has the whole fear of... Tyson's biggest fear is, of course, something happening to Cece. As well as also a slight uh, thing, not with all insects, but mostly with wasps, with wasps and uh, things like that. Because of one stinging him as a kid, which that did happen to me um, on my great-grandpa's farm. Ended up getting stung by a wasp chick while was playing with his dog there, and that sting really hurt. I mean, ah! It, that was not not a very pleasant experience. 
So, hmm, a Discord message. Oh, okay. <laughs> little message there from little message there from my sister. So, so of course there's that. Uh, Kiki's fear, of course, is ventriloquist uh, ventriloquist dummies. I just sort of made that up. Cause, uh, funny thing is. Like, okay, the in, uh, remember how I mentioned in the last video for version one and two, I actually, um, as I was coming up with these ideals, I actually, um, me and the Kroger employees that I was imagining in these ideals, we actually had discussions about this. So they weren't completely in the dark about, like, like why are you imagining us as that? We actually, you know, you know, they actually knew, you know, like, oh, he's doing this. And sometimes, and you know, had little talk, had little, you know, talks about it there. Um, like back in version one and two, um, Donald, uh, the guy that based him off of back in version two, actually even drew himself as sort of a, um, I guess, kind of Marvel style Green Ranger. Sort of had like these blades and stuff like that coming at him, coming out of him and stuff like that. Almost Wolverine style there. <laughs> Yep, and also speaking of which, uh, for I, oh yeah, also there was um the forklift thing I mentioned with Alex for uh, version three, uh yeah, um guy that he was based on, um in our talks about Kroger Force episodes he actually mentioned like oh you're doing about you know everybody's fears well, yeah I'm man them garbage man let me tell you Gabe them garbage trucks they got them blades on them things freak me out. <laughs> Yeah, I'm telling you, man, the blades are scary. <laughs> and of course, in Donald's case, who he was based off at that time for version three, yeah, he he told um he told me his thing was insects, and the one that really scared him the most was spiders. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, prop. I don't know if he. I don't know if he'd be up for going to see any Spider-Man movies. <clears throat> yeah. Who knows there. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't really know much with Kiki. She did know the the one I based Kiki off of version three. She was aware of me writing this stuff. But didn't really, you know I mean, a few times she might would, you know, sit with the rest of us and talk and maybe pass a few words on it. But yeah, she what wasn't just into it, into it, yeah, but but you know, she didn't really but as far as, you know, well well, you're a part of the thing. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> didn't really, you know, at that time, what didn't really, uh, just like, you know, whatever. Yeah, I guess I'm into it. <laughs> and of course, obviously, with CC being, you know, this time being Christina, of course, yeah, you, it's obvious that she knew about it because, hello, we're engaged at that time for real. So, yeah, that's kind of obvious there. Um, but, uh, one thing I want to mention before. Before I, before I continue, um, another thing around this time that I actually tried to do, um, I think right at the beginning of me doing, of writing Kroger Force version 3, and possibly going into the fourth version, um, there was a point where I actually um, had wrote in there that I would, um, well actually not wrote in the series, but I actually went to the head manager about this at that time, the one that I'm calling Susie, and asked her about, you know, what if we get with like the TVs, like the TV studio, stuff like that, and actually make this an actual show, you know, you know, like, hey, we all work at Kroger, and we could be, and we, and combine it with Power Rangers, and we'd be stars. And of course, like, and of course, like I said, there's probably a lot to go through to get something like that off the ground. Uh, I kind of, I mean, I kind of sort of knew uh, as far as, you know, having to ask folks like, okay, like I mentioned before, I asked uh, Susie, she did, she was like, she didn't really know what to do as far as, you know, helping to get that off the ground, because that's not really her expertise, so the only other thing I could, so the only other uh, thing I could do that that I thought maybe could help out with things was actually talk with Saban Entertainment, the one that's responsible for Power Rangers, you know, and get and get like a stamp of approval as well as some, you know, a team, you know, some of the people there to help make this a reality. <laughs> but 
That didn't quite happen, and I... This is gonna be pretty hard to believe, but this really did happen. I actually called Saban Entertainment Studios about this idea, Power Rangers Kroger Force, and I asked them about, you know, uh, about, you know, trying to help me make, the, uh, possibly helping me make it and stuff like that. And the only thing they told me before hanging up was, Disney is evil! And I never did was able to get back in touch with them. I don't know. And at that time, yes, we do now. As I mentioned before in a previous video, um, one thing that I that I ended up finding out much later, probably after that phone call, because um, I think you know Saban got Power Rangers back from Disney when you know he started with Samurai. I think like in twenty. 11 I, I want to say um, so before then yeah Disney had the rights to Power Rangers not sure how exactly the relation between Saban and Disney was but for them to just lash out like that and you know I'm not even and I get the only thing I can assume is maybe they thought I was some uh, maybe they thought I was like some executive from Disney or somebody that worked there and that's what uh or I would say maybe that was their way of telling me you know Disney owned Power Rangers but like I say the only thing I recall them saying was just Disney is evil and hanging up not seem like you know you would have like well oh I'm sorry like you know like hey I got an idea of Power Rangers scroll for oh no oh we're sorry we don't uh do Power Rangers anymore Disney owns that yeah, but yeah, somebody. I I like I say, it's even hard for me to believe. But somebody was, but whoever answered that phone was really on edge. <laughs> yeah, like I say. Um, but this was just one guy at the place, so I don't I don't know what the rest of the executives are like or the people working there are like. So, like I said, I'm not trying to say that Saban Entertainment is just gonna is just like oh they must be kind of uh, or this that. I'm just, I'm talking, I'm referring to that one guy that answered the phone, so. <laughs> uh, don't know what that deal was, but. <laughs> oh, well. That was kind of weird. <laughs> so. So then, of course. Uh, so then, of course, uh, after that, uh, back to the episode after talking about the fears and stuff, and Cece, of course, mentions that, yeah, hers is sort of similar to Tyson's fears uh, with, uh, you know, something happening to him. And then that's when, of course, uh, Slidon shows up and attacks and traps all the rangers in his beehive of fear, thus projecting their fears, of course. Um, end up getting Alex and, and his were running from a bunch of these uh, garbage truck with the blades. Donald's on the run from to Mixex, which ends up uh, and also and in Kiki's plays running from ventriloquist dummies. Tyson and Cece, however, um, Tyson is trying to get to Cece. I'm not completely sure what happens on Cece's end, but there is a moment where Donald is turned into an insect. Um. I think either he's turned into an insect or he's projected to look like an insect when he morphs and tries to fight off the insects that are attacking him. Uh, and Tyson ends up and Tyson ends up thinking that Donald is one of the insects because, uh, because of fly done, and it leads to the two rangers attacking each other. However, Cece is able to get them free of it there, and they and they come to the assistance of Alex and Kiki. Thus breaking them all out of the beehive of fear and defeating Flydon, of course. Then, uh, and I, I want to say I think there was some, uh, I think, oh, I forgot to mention, uh, yeah, this is kind of where the backup ranger idea sort of gets a little, uh, gets a little Mary Sue-ish. Uh, during the talk about all their fears and stuff, they were discussing with a employee named Joshua. 
based off of one of my friends from back then, uh, who we'll be seeing again in version 4. Uh, so as they're talking with him and everything, uh, yeah, they and the Rangers get captured, Joshua got a hold of four of the other employees to get backup morphers uh, in order to stop Flydon, who had grew big and was attacking in Texas. So they could pilot the, the Kroger truck Zords to, in order to defeat Flydon, thus, thus giving the, the original Rangers the opening to get out of the beehive of fear. And the day is saved by two sets of Rangers. Yeah. Kind of, now, yeah, that is, that was a use, that, I'm not saying that wasn't useful, but this, after this episode is where that backup ranger thing would start to get a little Mary Sue-ish, uh, because, because honestly, something like that should have been more of a, even if it happened more than once, maybe like, you know, something that is very rare to happen, sort of like, cat morphing into the cat ranger that's where the idea of the back of rangers came from uh was cat and spd being able to do that and of course in the sentai it was called deca swan <laughs> so with that uh so of course the rangers um uh, they what did i want to say oh yeah uh so with that said um if the fly is defeated and then, of course, we go into the next episode. <laughs> yeah, can't talk carefully. Uh, which is Tyson focused somewhat. Uh, apparently, uh, they apparently the Raiders are in are talking with another employee, uh, Kelly, who has a crush on the on one of the deli chefs. Uh, and this this uh, this employee Kelly sort of has a resemblance of Neo. <laughs> Miss Independent, that's why I love her. She got her own way. Won't you come and spend a little time? Something like that there. And yeah, we did have an employee like Kelly who, yeah, definitely had, definitely made me think of Neo. And he always sang when he was on the job and stuff there. So, uh... So of course, um, during this, some uh, very weird attacks started happening. More, more, more weirder than usual, like a uh, monster turtle attacking downtown, and Tyson begins to notice that something is very similar to these attacks, uh, much like some old stories he wrote in what's called a weird yet normal day. They defeat the turtle, of course, and then the next day, as Tyson and Cece are preparing to go on a trip with his grandparents, then we get some uh, some attacks even more random, like some mimes attacking in the driveway, monster mimes anyway. And then, and as for the other rangers, uh, mud stuff like mud monsters and zombies start attacking the other rangers, and even. Tyson's Big Papa himself becomes a zombie. <laughs> turns out that all this is being, uh, turns out that Planus is behind all of this, who is another one of the evil aliens, uh, that make, that can make stories come to life. The Rangers are, are eventually able, uh, able to get back together, of course, and of course, they, they have Kelly to get some of the other employees once again. <laughs> to morph into a, into the backup rangers <laughs> and assist them with with uh, with going up against planets and his random monsters there <laughs> in order to save the day of course Oops. oh yeah and, there, and as well as pilot the croco truck zord <laughs> yeah so then of course uh, and of course a yellow ranger focused episode um, uh, Kiki is very upset about a customer who complains about some tomatoes, and, yeah, it's about some bad tomatoes, and she's so frustrated that she actually comes to the deli where Tyson and Alex and Donald are discussing some things for his bachelor party, and she, in and she just comes up and slaps him with the bag of tomatoes, <laughs> hey, thus fussing at him about, about what the customer did there. This ends up, and then eventually turns out that the customer was actually another alien known as Traitus in disguise. And of course he attacks, and during the battle, 
ends up causing Alex and I mean uh, Tyson and um Kiki to switch places, just sort of like similar to Tyson and Erica in version one. Oh dear, this again. <laughs> And this kind of makes them even argue even more so when they try to go to the bank in order to uh, withdraw some money in order for a deal with traders in order for him to switch them back. <laughs> yeah, and, this, and the argument between Tyson and Kiki sort of makes me think of Dinobot and Rat Trap uh, in the episode when they were trying to get a cure for Rhinox when Rhinox was doing all that sneezing. Achoo! 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 <laughs> And, of course, at the end of that episode, he, well... Oh, bean vines didn't digest well. Oh, do not turn your back on me, Maximal! And he points his rear-facing Megatron. Tail raises up. No, not that! Ah! <laughs> Ah, that did it. <laughs> Let's grab the cure and go, go, go. <laughs> I have to admit, this is my most humiliating defeat in all my career. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, you probably can figure what happened there, even if you didn't watch the episode. Just from the... <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, now maybe think of Papa Clump. Who they call my name? Yeah, I called you if your name is. <laughs> so, okay, so enough with that. Uh, turns out that the deal doesn't go through too well, and now they have, and now another one of their fellow employees. Uh, I'm gonna call him. Uh, we're gonna call him Bob. <laughs> I know that kind of sounds basic, but yeah, to keep from using the real name. So we're going to call him Bob. Bob decides to pretty much do like a wild, wild west to trade us. Uh, confronts him at, at a place called Dragon's Lair, which is no longer in business now. Uh, Dragon's Lair is a place that used to be in, in Bolger, and they sold, they sold trading cards and stuff like Magic the Gathering, I think possibly Yu-Gi-Oh cards and a few other little trinkets, and they all on top of that they allow people to come in there and play games there, like especially the different uh, card games like Yu-Gi-Oh and stuff like that there. Because uh, I've actually played against some people up there at Dragon's Lair, uh, and there was sometimes that me and Christina went up there and just play some regular board games there, so uh, just for fun and everything back because we were back when we were still dating and stuff. Oh, or engaged, I mean, sorry. So, and of course now, since we're married, we play games here. <laughs> so, so of course, uh, Bob ends up defeating Traitus in a duel. Uh, however, instead of, instead of like the Japanese version of Yu-Gi-Oh, instead of a penalty game, well, Traitus gets mad and decides to to battle against Bob, who uses a backup morpher of his own to morph into a male Yellow Ranger. And they fight to the tone of Michael Jackson's Smooth Criminal. Or actually, to the tone of Michael Jackson's I'm Bad. Because I'm bad! I'm bad! You know it! And the whole world has to answer right now to tell you what to get. Who's bad? Ow! Oh! Dum 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 dum. Doom, doom, doom. <laughs> Pretty much like that there. <laughs> and the court and and after a while the rest of the Raiders show up and they all defeat Traitus. Without without the use of the of the Megazord for this one episode. <laughs> and of course it ends with, of course, the Bachelor Party for Tyson, uh having Jordan Sparks perform no air in it. No air. Oh, <laughs> Then, of course, uh, so then we get to a CC-focused episode, which leads into something very interesting at the end. Uh, in this episode, uh, the Rangers uh, conf uh, actually confront 
an actual gremlin. <laughs> yeah, not a part of the alien group that they've been fighting uh, in the previous episode, but an actual gremlin monster. Pretty much like the gremlin movie back way back in the day, you know. Remember those little... If you don't, if you don't know what this is, uh, the gremlins were kind of these little creatures. They would be all real cute and fuzzy. <coughs> sort of looked similar to the Furbies we would get in the early 2000s there that a lot of people got into fights over at the store on the news there uh, trying to get these things for their kids. So the gremlins now, very cute and adorable, but you had, there were a, there were some rules you had to follow with these things. One, don't get them wet. Don't feed them after midnight. And I think there's a few other rules there. But yeah, if you broke any of these rules, uh, the stuff like this would happen. They would possibly, uh, they would go crazy. Um, they would multiply. And on top of that, they could possibly turn into big rabbit, into big scary monsters. For kids! <laughs> so, so they uh, managed to defeat, they met the gremlin retreats, leaving behind the gremlin egg. And for some reason, Cece decides she's going to nurture this egg at, as her baby. Hey, I... <laughs> I wrote it. I had to go back in time and ask myself why I wrote this, okay? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, like I say, I wrote some pretty weird stuff back then. <laughs> Much like the early comics. <laughs> so, so, Cece, Cece actually sits on this egg on the couch, and, uh, cause her and Tyson are staying together, um, yeah, I know, uh, and yeah, I know the, um, any of y'all watching, you know, that's probably thinking, like, well, wait a minute, if y'all weren't married yet, you know, you know, they, which, yes, is very true. Don't get me wrong. But there was a time at one point I actually did think of, you know, while we were engaged, thinking, like, well, maybe it might be okay if we, you know, live together, you know, yeah, until the way, and then, you know, when the, and then, you know, um, you know, then we already be in this house uh, before the wedding. So sort of like uh, Martin and Gina. <laughs> Martin! But, yeah, that, and of course, uh, I was informed that that was not such a good idea. Because, you know, you know, uh, it's best that you marry first, then move, then the two of you together like we are now. So, yeah, but at that time, I, like I say, um... You know, I did, but I, uh, in this version, yeah, I wrote, and also version four, um, I, for that, I wrote it, you know, okay, since we're engaged, we are staying together. Yeah, just for the sake, for the story's sake, yeah. <laughs> so, anywho, um, yeah, CC sitting on this egg like a chicken. Ba -ba -ba <laughs> and, wait, and while, while knitting, and watching uh, one of the soap operas, I think either Guiding Light or Young and Restless. <laughs> um, I would say probably Young and Restless because then we get this theme. Do 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 <laughs> so, so Tyson goes off to work, and the other sort of tease him a little bit about this whole egg thing. <laughs> uh, however, turns out um, Alex was off that day as well, and he shows he shows up at he show he comes by the house looking for uh, Tyson, and just so happens the egg hatches. At that very moment, Alex shows up, and of course, the little baby gremlin side looks at Cece and calls, Mommy. <laughs> and then there's a montage moment where, uh, where Alex offers, you know, they just kind of, you know, that where him and Cece just kind of hang out, uh, going different places with the baby gremlin. 
And there's a song that plays over it, over the montage from New Kids on the Block, um, that actually was at a con that was that air uh I've actually seen the music video for this song, but uh Christina and I actually got to hear it in person at a concert for New Kids on the Block, which was our first concert we ever went to, um, in Bo at the Boulder Civic Center. Uh and this song was We're doing a new money with the Everybody at the club right now, tell the DJ to turn it loud. Dedicate, man, your favorite song. Sing the ladies, you can't go wrong. <laughs> Stuff like that. And then, if you came here by yourself, if you came here by yourself tonight, cause he would not pick up the phone. He was supposed to bring you here tonight. Couldn't find him, so you came alone. It don't matter cause you're here now. And the music you're enjoying it. So for the next couple minutes, well, baby, I'ma be your boyfriend. Pretty mama, if you're single, single, you don't gotta be alone tonight. So while the DJ play that single, single, just pretend that I'm your man tonight, and you don't gotta be alone. I'll be your boyfriend. Girl, I'll be your boyfriend. <laughs> and be your boyfriend till the song goes off. Yeah, that new kid, they sung with Neo. For some reason, they didn't have Neo at the concert to sing with them when they performed at Boja. I don't know why. I was at, when, when I heard that music play at the concert, I was like, oh, that's the, that's the song single. And the first thing I'm thinking, Neo's going to show up on stage with him, and he didn't. Why? I don't get it. <laughs> oh well, maybe maybe they weren't able to get them, but still, I was so disappointed for that moment. Yeah, <laughs> but I still did enjoy. But we still enjoyed the concert, though. I'm just, it was just that one moment that we kind of like, oh, why? <laughs> so back to the episode. Yeah, um, this whole thing with the montage. Like I mentioned, you know, I I would that me and the other co-workers would talk about a lot of these episodes that I'd be running through my head and stuff uh, and you know make you know that little discussions on them and stuff like that uh, especially for fun and everything and this was actually a suggestion for Al for Alex for the guy that was that he was based off of um, he when we were talking in the daily one time about this is a uh, we were uh, this was actually somewhat of an idea from him. It was really a joke that he came up with because we were talking about how in certain movies, how, you know, when, you know, there's the boyfriend and the girlfriend or the husband and the wife and uh, so, and all of a sudden, you know, uh, the man, the husband or boyfriend comes home. Well, we'll just, we'll just say the husband. Husband comes home and there's this other guy that's sitting with his wife. A lot of times, don't nothing be going on. It don't don't be nothing going on most of the time, but all of a sudden, uh, a certain position that they might be in, uh, depending on the situation, all of a sudden, like, and then the first thing, first thing, the friend will be like, "It's not what you think. It's not what you think." <laughs> so, yeah, he sort of put that in there. Um, we put that in the story where Tyson came home. Uh, Cause Alex and Cita were looking at the little baby gremlin, gremlin, and uh, just saw, uh, look, just looking at. all of a sudden Tyson saw the two, like, and Alex is like, "It's not what you think, man." <laughs> and yeah, then like, of course, later, you know, they, fi you know, he figures out that you know nothing was going on and everything. And but but then the ba the little baby gremlin is uh, taken by the bigger gremlin that they faced earlier. And yeah, um, the bigger gremlin ends up um, devouring the little one to grow big, you know. And so the rangers end up having to battle this gremlin once again with a little help from another backup ranger. <laughs> this time it's actually um, a um, this is actually a lady from the meat market. Um, let's see, I think what I called her. Um, 
Oh boy, um, we're just gonna call her Alice. So Alice, uh, morphs into the Kroger Force backup Pink Ranger, assisting, uh, with the smaller battle, and then eventually they have to use their Megazord to defeat the big giant gremlin there. Thus, Cece's a little sad because the little baby was lost the little time that she spent with him. Which, um, yeah, sort of makes her sad a little bit. At least it makes more sense than Junior and my wife and kids with that little balloon baby. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what he called it. You'll have to see the episode for yourself. It's, it's a little cringing what he called that balloon baby. <laughs> so, well, more... You know, <laughs> but the episode ends on a positive note where we, where Tyson and CC do get married, uh, cutting right to their wedding. Jamie Foxx sings, uh, sings that wedding vow song to them, uh, for the wedding. You know, well it's been five years, can't hold back my tears, cause I'm just. So happy I'm marrying an angel today. Oh, pretty much like that. <clears throat> yep, and I actually, I actually sung that song at our actual wedding. Yeah, that was when it came to me to make my vows to Christina. That song was part of it there, and I, I, I sung that whole song out and. Yeah, a lot of people were, uh, a lot of people out of joy were in tears there. Yeah, so, yeah, there was a lot of Kleenexes being passed around after the song was sang there. Yep, so, very touching moment, by the way. <laughs> so, yes, after, so after that, then, um, there's a filler episode where, yeah, and that, uh, where Joshua and some other, uh, some other employees, uh, some youngins, <laughs> the youngins, <laughs> uh, actually end up having to take on a couple of monsters known as Shell Shacks and Shelltron as a group of backup rangers because the other uh, rangers, uh, Tyson and Cece, are on their honeymoon, of course. And I think Alex, Donald, and Kiki were away from the store for a uh, while. Well, like maybe they were off or on a vacation of their own. I'm not. Not completely sure. However, uh, during this filler episode and shortly after it, uh, the Rangers ended up going to a concert at the beach. Uh, at the beach where, but then the concert gets attacked by Kai Gun and Grandi from version two. Uh, pretty much the same joke says version two with them. At the same time, um, at the same time, Uncle Michael is working on a. Actually, well, Michael's with them. But Michael, Uncle Michael ends up going on some quest that eventually leads him to a very special special power source. Meanwhile, back at the store, um, the um, a new uh, one of the other co-workers in the receiving, Felicia and Alan, are working on a Kroger defense system uh, that would come in handy for later. And Michael's on his quest still, you know, trying to find the uh, what. And what he's looking for is known as the orbs of, of darkness and light. Um, he finds these orbs. The light gets taken away. But he's able to take the orb of, of darkness and become the Kroger Force Black Ranger. He comes back just in time to help defeat against Grandi and Kai Gun, uh, Thus helping the Rangers uh, succeed against them. Sort of like the sort of resemblance of Kruger and SPD becoming the Shadow Ranger. Yeah. So, then of course, later, uh, Uncle Michael is able to... Uncle Michael gets a special gift that Alan and Felicia were working on, where the entire Kroger store becomes a Megazord. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly how that would work in real life there. I mean, okay, yes, we did... And yes, this was based off how the SPD... How the SPD base actually became a Megazord itself in the SPD show. Yeah, and I, I kind of, I kind of, yeah, I know. TV convenience and magic. Uh, but yeah, a place like the Kroger store? 
I mean, at least with the SPD base, you kind of saw from how it was formed that it possibly could do that, in a way, <laughs> um, to a certain extent. But yeah, yeah, that's quite a stretch, the big store transforming. And I actually, I was actually telling an old fr uh, a friend of mine, um, uh, one of our nice stalkers at the moment, about a lot of this stuff, you know, that, that I'm telling you guys about. And I got to the point like, well, the Kroger store changed into a Megazord. He's like, he said it reminded him of an anime where an actual building became a giant robot and then went magically back, went back into place. <laughs> hmm. Makes sense to me. So, yeah. And of course, much like the SPD uh, base, you know, they say all employees and all employees and customers to the safety zone, all employees and customers to the safety zone. And the store will start to come start to change form and connect and stuff. Uh, Uncle Michael would be up in the manager's office, which would become the control base for him and the other rangers to uh, to sit alongside him and operate the store. <laughs> Cockpit activate. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty big stretch of the imagination, if I do say so myself. <laughs> And, of course, there were later episodes after this where um, he had one later episode that involved Kiki uh, going on a date with a guy named Ace and Silverstone. Um, Ace and Silverstone, who ended up presenting the Rangers some new power-up effects. Uh, utility armor. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, utility armor where they could combine with, where they could combine with the armor of different, uh, like the some of the equipment at the store, like the like the electric jacks, the hand jacks, the butt, the um, the little flat top buckets with that we some that I, that some of us still use, but we have something different now. Um, and the little green, the brown, the brown and green card stuff like that. And the, so yeah, yeah, um, basically combining with some of the equipment that we use at the store. Uh, as battle armor, similar to the cycle, similar to the Kroger cycle armor. Uh, however, there was kind of a catch to it. Ace took control of the armor in order to make the Rangers do his bidding. However, Kiki managed to break uh, to break the Rangers free of it. And being that she was dating Ace at the time, she was pretty ticked off. And, and all of a sudden, finding us finding this out about Ace and, and really let him have it. Well, no, she didn't kill him or nothing, but, but yeah, they really, really let him have it, and yeah, so he retreated, but he would come back. <laughs> there were other episodes, there were crossover episodes that were pretty interesting for this version. Um, you had one where we crossed over with Kim Possible, a live-action version of Kim Possible, but actually more but but act but uh but definitely more closer to the cartoon in the way you know they acted everything not like the live action movie that they tried to make which not so good <laughs> so yeah and the, the really cool thing about the team up um kim possible along with her brothers run Way and Monique all geared up in those battle suits that Kim had in So the Drama in season four, alongside with the Rangers all morphed and in their utility armor, and they went up against a team up, uh, were up against uh, I think I want to say Ace and Silverstone again, who uh had some of his uh not only rock soldiers but also some uh new creatures that was working with him. Along with Dr. Dracken and Shigo, uh, and their henchmen, also uh, some of other Kim Possible's villains like Monkey Fist and Duff Killigan, and yeah, big battle royale with that there. <laughs> then um, another team up had, of course, involved. You remember how they have Forever Red and Wild Force with all the Red Rangers, right? Well, in this case, I did something a little different, um, seeing as how. The people I was imagining as these rangers, um, all uh, the only, uh, the yellow ranger was the only one on the team that 
I think um, she said she was Taiwanese. And before you say, you know, because I know first thing you're probably going to think is Trini being the Red Ranger and she was Asian and that whole black and that whole stereotype. And thing. This It wasn't like that. This is just kind of how it ended up. You know, we just that's just what we pictured. No, no racism or nothing like that. It's just kind of how it did. That's just how it happened. And I believe that was the thing with Saban. I don't think he was trying to be racist or anything like that with Zach and Trini in their perspective costume or even Jason, you know, Native American thing. I, it was just the way the casting went. And and I feel like if if that really was an issue, like just say if the cast members thought like, oh, he's being racist or something, I'm pretty sure they would have taken that up with Saban and been like, hey, we don't like this. Can you put us as different colors or we walk? Yeah, but that didn't happen. So, yeah. Um, and, yeah, I know they did. There was some other issues that happened during season two of Mighty Morphin. But, yeah, there was not, nothing had to do with race, though. Yeah, it was some completely different issues that happened behind the scene. But nothing had to do with race, though. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so, anyway. Um, so, yeah, Karen. I mean, I mean. <laughs> I spoke. <laughs> so, uh, Kiki. Um, well, at least I didn't say the last name there. So, yeah, it could be any. That could, for all we know, it could be the Karen from Big Mama's house. Who of y'all is Karen? <laughs> no, there ain't no Karen here. Uh, so, which I think that may have been another name. But anyway, uh, Kiki was the is the only one that was Taiwanese. All the others, um, myself. CC, uh, Alex, Donald, and of course Uncle Michael, all of uh, were black African American, and there was an enemy that uh, that showed up trying to uh, limit, trying to uh, change history, uh, which uh, ends up making this a Black History episode. Trying to change history where no African American uh, would exist. However, Kiki ended up breaking. His end up end up uh, becoming a loophole in this little plan because not only was she just Taiwanese, but she was also part African American, sort of kind of like I actually have seen a Japanese African American once before uh, in a magazine. Yeah, so this actually is possible, and yeah, yeah. Let's be honest, there we do have some brothers out there that are probably married to. Some Asian ladies there, you know, so obviously there's going to be some mixed kids of that, just like how, you know, sometimes we have, you know, a, a black, a, a black guy and a, and a white, a black person, a white person marry and have a, a biracial child, you know, it have you know, so it's a lot of interracials there. Um, so apparently Kiki was that and this was actually based off of uh I don't think she really was. She, I mean, she probably was in real life. I think she really was full Taiwanese. But we always used to kind of just, just as just for fun. We weren't, you know, making fun of her or anything. But because of the way she acted around us, we were like, "Girl, you must be, girl, you must be part black. <laughs> you must be a must must be part sister down there." Like, you know it. <laughs> so. That was so based off of that joke, yeah. We uh for the character Kiki, yeah, she was part African American, part Taiwanese, and the, and created the loophole ruining the monster's plan, and also in the process of saving the rest of us, uh, she was able to get a hold of all the African American Power Rangers, sort of like a Forever Red team up, and like uh you know, Zach. The Mighty Morphin Black Ranger, TJ, Red Turbo Ranger, the Black Red Turbo Ranger, and so on and so on. You know, every every Ranger that was African American there morphed alongside her, pretty much like Forever Red, and pretty much ganged up on this guy. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, that was that. That was a pretty interesting crossover. And of course, you had to have a crossover with another official Ranger team. In this case, by the time Version Three was out, we had to team up with. Jungle Fury, which the episode called Kroger Fury, uh, involving um, the uh, mo one of the main villains from Jungle Fury coming back, teaming up, uh, 
with some of with some of the Kroger Force villains and Ace of Silverstone. And yeah, they needed the help of the Jungle Fury Rangers to help them defeat them. So that's where you get the Kroger Force and Jungle Fury team up. Afterwards, you also got a uh, episode introducing the Kroger Force White Ranger, where they ended up going to the Dream World, much like version two, uh, which of course was a little boy Jonah, uh, who actually was Tyson's twin brother, who got whisked away to this world when he was five years old, uh, when he actually was five, and now it's been 15 years. So with Tyson being 20 in this series, the little boy is actually 20, but he's been in the form of a little five-year-old boy because of this world after getting him out. And, you know, he first gets his, you know, the, the gem of light to make to become Kroger Force White Ranger. They all return to the real world. Uh, Kiki uh, decides, uh, decides to look after him. And, and, one, and then, of course... Um, now this actually happened in a different way, but I but to keep it a little PG here, uh, we're just gonna say that you know uh, she wakes up one morning, calls him down for breakfast, and when Jonah comes out for breakfast, he's a grown 21, 20 year old man. Whoa, <laughs> and looks similar to Will Smith. <laughs> well, okay, actually, post um, yeah, pretty much yeah that yeah. <laughs> the guy that this Jonah was based off of was actually um, a big fan of Will Smith. So, yeah, it was kind of a little insert of his. Um, and so, yeah, technically, I guess you could say we were fraternal twins. Yeah, so, you know, look completely different instead of alike. So, <laughs> that's an explanation for that. So, and with the addition of the Kroger Force White Ranger, you got new zords for the rest of the rangers as well as the uh as well as uh, for the for the existing rangers and a special zord for the white ranger that combined with these new zords uh which were of course the zords somewhat similar to version two the thunder plane ocean drill tank um this time green ranger has a wild yeah wild tractor uh this time the yellow ranger has a fire locomotive instead of the uh Instead of the forklift, instead of a bullet train, the Pink Ranger has the Pink Helicopter. Um, the Black Ranger has a Shadow Tank, uh, which they all, the first five combined to form the original Megazord form. The Shadow Tank would sometime kind of serve like an auxiliary Zord, pretty much like Titanus. But then you had uh, the Kroger Force White Ranger, Jonah, has the Space Shuttle, which would give them flight and everything, so... Yep, and sometimes the shuttle will combine with the shadow tank to make a Megazord of its own, and then the two, then sometimes they would combine again there. So there was that. Yeah, so that was pretty much as far as I thought of on version three. It was quite a bit, <clears throat> quite a bit. I ain't gonna lie. And there's quite a bit for version four that'll be coming in the next, in another video. Uh, version five. Pretty much like number one didn't have much. I might possibly put it in the same video uh, with version four since there's not really much to version five. Um, but I'll have to see. Uh, a lot of it depends. Like right now, I'm looking battery energies. Uh, yeah, battery energies. Like, okay, we need to wrap this up. So, yeah, just all depends there on, you know, how much there is to say about version four. So. Just, uh, just letting you know that, but that will be in the next video, and you'll find out. Um, hope y'all enjoyed what you heard on that. Uh, definitely give the video a like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Give us some special thanks. Uh, buy some of our available comics, as well as also support us on Patreon, even if it's just a dollar a month. So, until then, we will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Oh yeah.